Hello, welcome to Relaf Guitars, and um, I'm gonna. I decided the other day I'm gonna do a sort of walk through um, a number of guitars I really love, which came out as Girls, which <laughs> was a bit of an odd an acronym. No acronym, you know what I mean. Girls, guitars I really love. Well, and and the reason I thought of doing this was because every night usually I take one of these guitars, one of these various guitars off the peg at home and play it. And uh, I've ended up with a collection of guitars, mostly, almost all of which I've made myself. Um, and because I've lived with them for a while and I've done some work to you know, find out you know, where something wasn't right, I've put something right. And usually what happens is that they end up being far more than just a guitar to me and it's quite probably quite normal that you invest time and energy into something that becomes special um, but I just thought just out of pure interest this isn't about teaching anybody anything this is really just about showing some guitars that I really love and um, just talking a bit about <clears throat> how they came to be and why it is that I love them um, so this isn't like this isn't in sequential order. This isn't the first of any any number of guitars I made or anything. But oh, I mean it's the first. No, it's not even the first double cut one I made. But it's just one of a series of guitars. Now this one um, was the first. No, I'm like see, it's not even the first. This one, I think maybe in sequence, it possibly was the first double cut. Um, it wasn't. It was the first one started and the last one finished um, and didn't get the designation number one. But it doesn't matter anyway. So anyway, so I started making this thing and it's got oak on top and mahogany on the base, you know, because I was into making things incredibly heavy, um, which was, of course, a bit too heavy for anything. But hey, so it's a, it's a, I think it's a one piece, could be, Two pieces. Who knows? Mahogany. Oh, sorry, jeez. Uh, two piece mahogany base by the look of the seam line down the middle there. Two piece mahogany and two piece oak in the same line. So the joins in the same line. But the oak was reclaimed oak from my um, salvage shop down in Tavistock, and it's a tongue and groove. And you can see a bit of it breaking away there. Uh, you couldn't see that it was filled in previously by the finish, but. Um, since I scraped the finish back, etc., you can see that it's tongue and groove, and I really like that anyway because it's it's um it's just a fun material to reclaim. Anyway, so I started out. I I sort of copied a shape from somewhere. Maybe I think I got it on on online, um, printed it out, tiled it out, and sort of tweaked it a bit or something. Anyway, so and. And actually what happened was I got it too small, slightly too narrow down here. This sort of about here was too narrow, just a fraction. And of course, the thing about these double cut guitars is you haven't really got hardly any leeway for changing those, diameter, those dimensions really. So that if you want to get your hand into there, there sort of needs to be a minimum distance here that works. And I, I didn't really get it very well on this one. So yeah, the upside down risk of catching my hand on there so I kind of made this thing and then not long after that figured out they didn't really work for me anyway so I, I went ahead and cut the shape out um, and then this neck came from a German supplier um, which I still occasionally get necks from and this one is actually a rosewood one um, they do a lot of stuff that seems to be in the tech wood stuff these days but I got rosewood one and this was designated as a, a, a deep a deep heeled uh, jazz guitar neck, extra depth in the heel, but I bought it anyway because I, I kind of like the look of it. And it came with a sort of straight ended thing, I think. And what I did is I cut into that my um, what I call Bart Simpson headstock. Um, I don't know why this just reminded me of Bart Simpson, but it's a sort of homage to the Gibson one with the same sort of elegance, but a bit of an extra wibble on there to make it not Gibson. Anyway, um, so I, I kind of sort of went ahead and started building this thing, and um, there's a there's a Facebook album showing all the stages of it. So you know, I think I cut this out by routing it. Apologies to neighbours, I routed this thing, um, screaming router noise, which of course is heavy duty. We're using mahogany and oak, um, 
and then I cut a very small cavity on the back and made an oversized, not very well fitting cover. Um, just set up two controls, very simple, a micro switch rather than even a toggle. So that's just three position on, on, on micro switch. Um, and I had this bridge given to me, um, donated to me by a guitar, Real Love Guitars um, friend of, and uh, it's a Tone Pros. So I was kind of thinking, well, oh, great, I'll, make, I'll fit this onto this guitar. Originally, I had these routed for P90s and I had some, I think it was the, no, it wasn't. I was going to scavenge the, it was going to be bare knuckle pickup, super massive, was that what they were called? Super massive P90s were going to go in there. Anyway, so I got this German supplied neck and I glued it together into this thing and was heading towards this double cut thing. And of course, once the neck was on, I realized there wasn't enough space there. So I started carving away at this, um, this way to begin with. And I sort of created just enough room to play, but I'd realized that I'd got the dimensions slightly wrong, which I corrected on the other ones I did after that. The other thing I got wrong slightly um, is the angle of join. And of course, I've seen lots of videos where people talk about the Les Paul or the Gibson angle of join, and it can range from anything from about one degree through to about four or more. You know, it's just, it's quite an imprecise thing. And certainly over the eras, um, they can go, they can really range quite significantly. And of course, a degree here makes a hell of a difference here. And as you can see, once I put this thing together, I thought to myself, oh my God, have I overcooked this? Or will I be able to even play this? And as you can see, it sort of just about works. And because that's a nice quality bridge, um, it sort of holds its own. It doesn't tilt or do anything untoward. And I could sort of crank up what became, in the end, Wilkinson mini humbuckers. I didn't like the P90s in here. They, I wanted I sort of, I wanted to be able to play this on a sort of covers band, rock and roll, styly thing, you know, all the sort of high gain classics. Can you see the reflection of a switch, push, push, switch pot on the whiteboard there? <laughs> anyway, the, uh, so I decided I changed over for mini humbuckers later on. I was quite happy with that. Um, you know, sort of slightly gloopy pick guard that was just inordinately difficult to do. Anyway, so uh, I went ahead and kind of sprayed this all up with uh, TV yellow, and I think it worked out okay, except for it showed up some huge defects where I'd badly filled underneath and stuff. So it was an imprecise job, but it's nitro, and then quite like a plonker, I sprayed over the side dots, so I had to mark them in later myself, and it ends up looking like it's, some, some parts it looks like it's got nibs, but it's just paint. Anyway, and on the back here, I've got some Cluson Deluxe, which I got somewhere, um, close on deluxe tuners, which are quite cool. And, uh, you know, quite a big chunk of a neck join there. Um, I always, I think I always had it, yeah, I always had it planned for the strap button on the back. I quite like that attachment. And a bit of a sort of crude old jack socket thing and slightly painted over a bit of strap button just to the offset of the join there as I realized. Anyway, so um, so I made this thing, originally had the P90s, and I didn't like the way it played. And actually, the funny part about this guitar, I think it always had one of those adjustable nuts on it, I think. But anyway, from, from the outset, it was a double cut with Morris on it. And from the minute I made it, I hated it. I absolutely hated it. Um, it just felt awful, uh, you know, and um, it, it the edges on here weren't rounded off like this they were sharp so it felt sharp to play uh, uncomfortable to sit with it was massively heavy all the weight was down in here because it's such a great bulbous thing um you know i'd messed up the angle so it was kind of had this high reach here um and it, to begin with and maybe it wasn't didn't have that nut but to begin with it didn't seem to stay in tune and everything about it i just despised um, and i just hung it on a wall and didn't go near it um, and I left it for a month or two, and then I sort of came back to it with that sort of, um, I don't know, sort of dogged thing of, God, I'm going to sort this thing out if it kills me. So I did, and the first thing I did was I just thought, screw it, I'm going to take a take a rasp or something to the edge of here. I'm just going to make this thing comfortable for starters, and so I did, and um, I just thought, I'm not even going to bother what the thing looks like afterwards. I'm just going to take away everything. I mean, this was a great big square-edged slab. So I took a bit of weight off, but also smoothed it off so it was 
much more comfortable to sit with. And it still wasn't a great sit down guitar because of the weight in the body, it sort of tilts bodywoods, if anything. Um, but then I did another setup and I installed this um, Tusk adjustable nut and suddenly it became absolutely amazing to play. Um, hard to describe, but it's the f it's got this beautiful flat action on it. Now, I don't know, let's have a quick check. Oh, look at this one-handed filming. Oh, you can probably hear the crunching of the mics. I'm so sorry, I'm trying to avoid touching them, but actually right now I can't seem to do it. So um, it's, it's actually got quite a bit of relief on it, weirdly, but it feels flat. So it's got a flat radius from the original Chinese whatever supplier. Um, and it's got a fair, you know, a bit enough relief on it. Um, but it, it's absolutely gorgeous to play. Um, I really love this neck. So, you know, the importance of a neck, and then when you get the neck right, suddenly everything feels good. I don't even notice this angle now. It doesn't matter to me, the fact that it's quite extreme, um, because it all functions. Um, and now I've got curves on the, on the body, so it's a much more comfortable creature to play, upside down. Um, so now it sort of hangs indoors and I go f reach for this regularly apart from the fact it's a bit heavy but uh, still fairly heavy but I, I reach for it because it's actually I would take this out anywhere if I was going to be playing with another band ever sob wipes away tear um, because it's it, with these um, mini humbuckles on now it's got a it's got a sort of I don't think they're very high output, but they're um, they're very they do do what I need for sort of driving a uh, what do you call it you know crunchy sort of sound, uh, and they have lovely warms to them too, and you know that sort of usable. Actually, funny enough with this one, not so distinct in the neck pickup, but the middle and the bridge do a really good job for me, and this quality tone pros. The, the thing about this that's interesting is that. Um, you know, they make a, a music lily and a few other manufacturers import Chinese versions of this bridge, which are identical, almost identical in construction and function. Um, but the only thing about them is, whereas the Tone Pros um, sits, I don't know if you can see this, almost, that's pretty horizontal compared to um, the uh, Chinese ones, which, bec because they're, there's a little play in here. They they tip they tip forward, um, and as a result, when they tip forward, this tiny amount of break angle here on the Tone Pros over there kind of disappears. It rotates forward, and you get um, you just almost run out of uh, um, angle over the the thingy, the saddle, so it plays badly. Or it can do, you, and I've had to, in some of the guitars I've made and I used them, I've put little cut washers under here to sort of bulk it out and push the bridge back a little bit, but it's not ideal. Anyway, so the point being is that this was, you know, was never probably ever going to be on sale um, because of its flaws, you know, and the fact that the paint job in now is, it, in fact, the paint job looks quite, quite beautifully messy and vintagey in the sense that, you know, it's clearly botched in all manner of ways, but actually it it works as a, you know, where it matters as an overall sort of playing thingy surface, it's perfectly good. Um, and it kind of looks cool from a distance, um, but up close it's got that sort of re incredible real life, it's being touched up and messed about with, and you know, you can see the edges scraped away here and stuff. Um, so despite all of its flaws, this has become actually a guitar I would definitely reach for if the house were on fire. Um, there's a few that I would reach for, which is quite tricky, but um, I get my wife to carry some out with me, obviously. But I love this thing now. And it, like I say, it was probably never likely to be on sale. However, um, the funny thing is, is that because it's got some pedigree now, by the way, the Beatles book is there because I wanted to just crank up and play a couple of bluesy songs like You Can't Do That um, later on. Well, there's no one here on site. Anyway, so it, although it's not a saleable guitar particularly, I absolutely love it. And uh, yeah, it will just be with me for ever. And I don't know, I think the thing about it is, is that a guitar that I'm beginning to see that a guitar that isn't perfect, but that you fight 
with for a bit and overcome its limitations actually ends up being far more in a way than a guitar that you get right the first time. Now that's a difficult one because I suppose you have a you think that customers are going to only want things that are you know kind of perfect straight out of the factory um, you know and of course they aren't they never are even if they look great they never are um, and I'm just wondering how the market works for something like this which is imperfect in terms of how it looks even how it's been constructed but now is is actually far more of a guitar than it could have been had I got it all right and that's a weird thing to say isn't it you know that it's better because I made mistakes than it it's not even like you know you think all right I'll make mistakes and then I'll correct them on the next one and, and I made a couple more after this where I got the neck angle right and it was simpler but in a way <clears throat> there's something sort of 70s punk-esque about the I don't know why that is but it gives me a really cool feel that this thing kind of goes around a, a corner from the side you know I mean there's a <laughs> there's a there's a sort of nice angle there you know um and it's it makes it unique a lot not a lot of other guitars in anyone's collection will have an extreme angle like that anyway um who knows you, you couldn't possibly start out trying to make flawed guitars um but you'll see from the series of videos um that actually a lot of the guitars that i keep and really love guitars i really love the girls i've got um are definitely flawed um, but there's so much more of a guitar because of it. Anyway, um, just show you the tones of this thing in a second. Let's just stop this recording, but I don't know what you can see because I can't see what the camera can see. Oh, the other thing about this guitar is it stays in tune all the time while it's on the peg, uh, which is an amazing, whoa, which is an amazing thing. I mean, it won't be exact, but it's it's enough so you pick it up. You want, you want to play it. so they probably are quite higher than I thought.
often go. Although it's nice. It'd be nice lead sort of mel melody playing type of tone. my double cut one with its imperfections all over the place but you know hanging high up on a strap I could play this all night thanks for watching see you again with another one soon